What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video and I can deny it no longer. Murkrow is kind of good. Okay, so as someone who is a huge Honchkrow fan, uh, I've always hated that Murkrow is better than the evolution. Uh, and don't worry, I will be making a Honchkrow team, you can rely on me to do that. Uh, but for now, I have to talk about Murkrow and what changed, basically. So, if you don't know, Murkrow has always had the tools at its disposal barring one item, uh, but it's never been able to actually find a niche in VGC that is all that good. I think we saw a little bit of it in, like, I don't know, VGC 2016 next to Kyogre once in a while, um, but it was outclassed by, like, Tornadus, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, we're going to get into why Murkrow is actually kind of good nowadays, uh, but before we do that, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications, because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content, and answer in the comment section down below, what do you think of Murkrow? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, or is it literally the best Pokemon ever? He's just a little baby. Anyways, let's get into it. So, uh, what is Murkrow? Who is Murkrow? Where did Murkrow come from? Murkrow is a Gen 2 Pokemon, which in Gen 5 got access to Prankster as a hidden ability. Now, Prankster makes it so all non-damaging moves, status moves, have their priority raised by 1, uh, but Dark types are immune to it. Murkrow itself is a Dark type, meaning that it is immune to opposing Prankster moves, which is quite good, uh, but it's got pretty bad stats. 91 speed, 85 special attack, 85 attack, and like, just unusable bulk, right? What does it do? Well, in previous VGC formats, you would occasionally see Murkrow be used as a Tailwind Pokemon, and it would run a set like this. It'd run, like, Tailwind, Foul Play, um, and, like, honestly, like, it had Taunt, and the last move was up to your decision. Sometimes, sometimes they would run, like, U-Turn, sometimes they would run uh, Icy Wind. It, it depends, right? The last move kind of doesn't matter. Um... Yeah, like, it, it honestly, I guess we would run, like, Rain Dance for, like, Kyogre in 2016. Uh, but yeah, that's what it did. Uh, and it had heavy competition in the past from Pokemon that also had access to Prankster Tailwind. Um, so, you know, you had Tornadus, or actually, let me go to National Deck so we can actually here. Um, yeah, so Tailwind, Prankster, yeah. Uh, so, like, there are other Pokemon with the same niche. You have Whimsicott. You would never use Illumise or Volbeat, to be honest, but, like, Whimsicott was the other big one, and then, obviously, we had Murkrow. Uh, and you, what you might notice is that Murkrow is the slowest of all of these at 91 speed. It's also the frailest with 60 HP and 42 in both defenses. So, like, Tornadus would usually outclass, uh, Whimsicott in terms of, like, utility, uh, sometimes Wimps can be used over Tornadus, it depended, like, they had different things they did, but they were both better than Murkrow. Well, nowadays, uh, a few things have changed. As of Generation 8, the way that Tailwind works is completely changed. So prior to Gen 8, how it would work is, you would set up a Tailwind, right? Um, and then, once the Tailwind went up, uh, you had to wait until the next turn to get your speed boost. But nowadays, that isn't the case, it's an instant speed boost. Uh, you know, it's the same with speed drops. Basically, uh, speed tiers are updated dynamically uh, before you had to wait a turn. So Tailwind plus Protect used to be a play. Now it's not. There's no need for it. Or, you know, now it's not like a common thing. So because of that, all of these Pokemon got far, far better together. But guess what? In this game, in the current format, we don't have Whimsicott. We don't have Hornatus. Leaving us exclusively with Murkrow which actually still has competition. Let's take a look at it. Murkrow, despite having reliable Tailwind, uh, isn't alone in that department in this game. There's Talonflame, who has the ability Gale Wings, which gives it priority on flying moves at full HP. So Talonflame is just as capable of using priority Tailwind, albeit with a little niche. You can't allow it to get faked out. Uh, but yeah, uh, so Talonflame is able to do that as well. Uh, but you know, Murkrow is still super frail. Yes, it can run Eviolite, but it isn't all that bulky. You have to invest so much into defenses that you end up losing out on some speed, making it less reliable. Then, we have other Pokemon that can effectively be like as fast of a Tailwind setter when not facing a Murkrow. We have 
Unburdened Driftblim, which is able to do the same thing. It gets double speed, and while it isn't priority on its Tailwind, it's still a very fast one, which, you know, Dynamic Speed Tears, it's effectively the same thing barring a Prankster Pokemon. Same with Kilowattril. Same with Noivern, they're all quite fast, and the thing that sets uh, Salamence apart from it is the fact that it isn't as fast, it doesn't have priority, but it has access to Intimidate, and it itself is a very strong Pokemon with the ability to take advantage of its own Tailwind and like start getting KOs. But why is Murkrow still seeing usage even in this pool of competition? And it's pretty simple. The Pokemon in this format are like the perfect conditions for Murkrow to use its tools effectively. Talonflame still gets used, Drifloom still gets used, Kilowattro, Noivern, not Noivern, <laughs> and Salamence still get used. But Murkrow is notably good. If we look at usage stats, Murkrow, as in, granted, this is early format. We're in day three of the, of the format being like taken a look at. Um, Murkrow is at very high usage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's number eight in usage, which is insane. To see it above things like Tyranitar and Arm and uh, 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 Rotom Wash and Garganicle and Ndidi, uh, like I said, it's still early format, so obviously this is gonna is this is gonna change, but it's still something to take a look at. So why is it perfect for Murkrow? Um, by the way, I'll get into the item that makes it better in a second, but for now we'll talk about the EV Light set. So Murkrow is capable of countering a lot of very common things in this current format. So. If you use like a, a standard build Murkrow, right? Here are a few Murkrows. Uh, this is the Evil I one. You have Tailwind, Haze, Foul Play, and Taunt. So Murkrow is able to Tailwind next to strong physical or special attackers like, you know, Clear Amulet Garchomp, which isn't able to be intimidated. So Tailwind, Swords Dance, get KOs with like Terra Ground Earthquake. It's it's very, it, Murkrow is like arguably not the face of hyper offense, but like the 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 lackey type of offense it's like the 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 little servant he's gotten this right it's like yeah that's me i'm the hyper offense guy uh it, yeah and then like garchomp's got like a cigar in his mouth and he's like i'm the big guy like that's how it is right goldango is he's goldango but it's it's the same sort of effect right um it's a pokemon with access to spread draco meteor steel effectively uh it isn't able to be status so speed control isn't a thing you can use on this guy as effectively with like thunder wave Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam, it's great coverage, it can tear a steel, and guess what, its downside is the speed, it's only 84 speed, so with Murkrow, you Tailwind up, and Goldango gets to go crazy, it's it's simple as that. But, what if you uh, don't want to have to deal with the possibility of a fake out into your Murkrow? Well, a new item got added, which fixes that, it's called Covert Cloak, and... Murkrow isn't really in danger of ever getting one shot by fake out, barring like guts, uh, guts, uh, flame orb, Hariyama with like plus one attack and Terra normal. Like, if you can invest to live a fake out, it's a 40 base power move, right? So, in most cases, if you run like a bulky covert cloak of Murkrow, you're always gonna get your tailwind off turn one. It's basically unstoppable because guess what? Remember what I mentioned earlier how prankster moves don't affect dark types? Faster Prankster Pokemon don't really exist in this game. If we just look at like Prankster Pokemon, we have Grafii at 110 speed, which, you know, that isn't really the biggest issue because guess what? If, if it's going to taunt you, you're immune to it because you're Dark type, right? That's the only one and Grafii also doesn't really see usage. And your Tailwind goes before any other taunt. It's, it's like an impossible to stop thing. Uh, so that's the big thing. Like this guy is super, super reliable this gen because of a lack of competition, plus the uh, the new tools at its disposal. But also, uh, you know, I have to make uh, one one concession. Uh, as the Don Ductor myself, Murkrow is technically an answer to Don Dozo if you're bad at the game uh, and you don't use Gothitelle plus Sylveon. So, uh, Murkrow is able to switch in on Don Dozos, haze their stats away, which you don't have to target it. You know, haze is a, a field effect, so it just gets rid of everyone's stat changes. Um, and then the Don Dozo is basically a sitting duck, a sitting Don. Uh, it's going to have to rely on its own normal stats, uh, and it's a 2v1 versus a Pokemon that isn't all that strong at that point. Uh, not to mention, Haze is also very good next to uh, partner Pokemon that drop their attack stats, like Choice Specs Goldango. You can Tailwind make it rain, and then the next turn, Haze make it rain again to go back to neutral. That's very cool. So that's like one of the big draws of Murkrow. Uh, but yeah, no, like that's literally it. Like if we take a look at like what's common in the format, 
Uh, it's it's still like a Murkrow game. Grimstar is a little bit scary. It can fake you out and prevent your Tailwind if you're not Covert Cloak. Uh, and then like, you know, Spirit Break will KO, but, it, but you're not preventing the Tailwind in like 99% of situations. Um, you know, these guys all get enabled by Murkrow. Uh, Amoongus gets shut down by Taunt Murkrow. Garganical gets shut down by Taunt Murkrow as well as Haze. That's very good. Dondozo gets shut down. Uh, Ferrigraph runs like mental herbs sometimes, so it doesn't really... But yeah, like, there's a lot of Pokemon that like somehow lose to Murkrow in this format, which is just an insane thing to say. As a matter of fact, if you don't believe me, Marcus Statter just won the uh, Stuggert VGC... Am I saying that right? I can't pronounce it, but it's, it's a VGC side event. That I can't pronounce the name of. Um, and he won it with this team. And what is it? It's Eevee Light, Murkrow, Taunt, Tailwind, Foul Play, Haze. Make it rain Goldango with Choice Specs. Uh, clear Amulet, Swords Dance, Garchomp. And it's just hyper offense, man. Like, it's it's a really good Pokemon nowadays. And I wanted to deny it as long as possible. But no. I can't anymore. I have to be honest with you guys. Yes, Murkrow is good. That is the conclusion of my video. If you guys have any questions, you know, obviously leave it down below. Um, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm going to be uploading some showdown live soon, so I'll be testing out more teams than just Don Dozo. So the Don Doctor will be clocking out for a little bit, but he'll be back. He will be back. He's always back. All right. Have a nice one. See you in the next video. Bye.